Hey there, my name is Charlie Ray, and in this video I'm going to show you a few of the actions from the Lux Lens Develop Set, and hopefully also give you a good understanding of how to best use them when you're editing your own images. Um, and as I edit, I'm going to be using these actions in what's called button mode. Uh, so up here in the actions panel, what you're seeing now is called normal mode, um, or kind of the default mode, and you're able to see all the actions. It's a little bit much to look at. Um, you are able to break them out and see exactly the steps that are being used to create each effect. So the only downside to that is that it's a lot to look at, and then if you are just getting started with actions, just getting used to them, you're worried about messing anything up, you are able to check or uncheck steps. Um, so if you want to play it safe, I would highly recommend button mode. So in the upper right of your actions panel in that drop down, it's the very first option there, just click button mode. You can see you're not able to check anything, uncheck anything, and the other great thing about button mode is that this set of actions has all been color coded for you. So each of those subcategories, all a different color, it's a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to look at. Uh, so let's get started with our edit. Uh, whenever I start a heavier edit like this, I usually like to decide what mood I'm going for, what feeling I want to bring out of the image. So this is the final image we're going for. And here's what the original image looked like. So the original image to me, it feels wintry, it feels a little bit dull. We've got bright colors here in the blue that just really don't have much life or pop to them. So here in our final edit, we're really going to kind of turn it from a wintry scene into a bright, colorful, kind of fall sunset golden hour scene. It really bring some life into all those green plants and back into our models here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that set of edits and we'll get started. So the first action I'm going to run is part of the analog category, Cool Chrome. And the first thing you'll notice is it does add some film grain because it is part of the analog set. And I'm not a huge fan of that in this case, so I'm just going to expand that actions folder it created. And the first layer there, Cool Chrome Noise, I'm just going to turn that off and the noise will go away. I'm actually just going to end up deleting it since we won't need it. Um, and right off the bat, you might think that this is taking our image in the wrong direction. We wanted to warm it up, bring some life back into it, um, but this is actually bringing out a lot of blues and greens, which are cold tones. So I like what it's doing down here in the green foliage, really bringing out some life and green to it, uh, but I don't like what it's doing to our model skin tones. They look kind of cold and unnatural. So I want to get rid of this effect in the areas over our model so that they're not turning those colors. Um, so I'm just going to brush with a black brush here at 100% on this mask layer, that cool chrome curve. And as I brush, you'll see that effect start to go away, and I'm just removing that green shift, blue shift on these areas that I'm painting over. So I've gotten the most of it. If you hit the backslash key, it'll actually show you what your mask looks like. And I'm able to see these little areas where I might have missed. So I'm gonna get the edges there, especially that skin tone in the hand where that blue or green shift is gonna be really obvious, really apparent. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit backslash, go back to the normal view here. So I want to use that same mask on our Cool Chrome Gradient layer, since that's really what's bringing those blue and green tones into our skin. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, Alt for PC, Option for Mac, click on that mask and just drag it down onto that Cool Chrome Gradient layer. And you can see it copied the mask, and we've now removed that effect from our models, and it's only adding blue and green to the background. So while it is adding some green back into the foliage, into the grass there, I want to really bring that out and warm it up. So I'm going to click on the Cool Chrome Curve. Up here, instead of RGB, red, green, blue, I want to only affect the blue channel. So in that drop down, I'm going to change it from RGB to blue. Here's our blue curve. So I'm just going to click in the middle of that blue curve, drag it down, and it's going to really bring out some greens and yellows as it removes blue from the midtones of this image. And I think that looks pretty good. So the other big thing I think about when I'm doing an edit like this is to look at my lighting. Uh, what are, where's my light source coming from? What is the quality of the light? So we really wanted to change the quality of that light from being a cold to more of a warm sunset look. 
And our light source is coming from behind our model. You can see she's backlit. She's got kind of a rim light where that light is wrapping around the edge of her scarf, the edge of her legs here. It's pretty obvious. Um, so our light source is somewhere up here in the upper left, kind of over this hill as the sun is setting. So I really want to accentuate that. I'm going to use the Midsummer Gold action. So I'm going to play that. You can see it adds a warm wash from left to right across our image, really accentuating that our light source is in the upper left, and it's bringing that warmth in. It is adding a little bit of yellow to our models here. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm going to drop the opacity of my brush down to about 30%. And I'm just going to go over their skin tones real quick. Not so critical in the dog's fur, but I'll go over him as well, just to remove a little bit of that yellow. Next, I'm going to create a little bit of an effect that the sun is actually there in setting, give a little bit more of a lens flare look. Um, so I'm going to click on the golden globe action. And you can see that gives us more of an orb of light. You can see it added the orb right to the center of our image. That's obviously not where we want it. So I'm going to expand that folder. You can see the golden globe gradient layer. I'm going to double click on the gradient. And here it actually allows me to click and just move it wherever I like. And it also allows me to scale it up or down in size. So I want to scale it up just a little bit. I really want the effect that our sun is flaring a little bit into the lens. You can see I want a little bit of the warmth on our model there. So right about there should work. I'm going to click OK on that. Next I want to add a little bit more contrast into this. I'm going to jump up to the Lux Lens Portrait set. Hopefully you guys bought that set as well. And I'm just going to use Pop Highlights. You can see it added a little bit more contrast. I don't want to overdo it in these bright areas on the edge of her hair or overexpose it. So I'm going to drop that down to about 70%. So it's just not quite as bright, but I'm still getting that pop. So the next action I want to run is part of the portrait set as well. It's Dodge and Burn. So in the Dodge and Burn folder, it's going to give me two layers, a Dodge layer, a Burn layer. They're actually the exact same type of layer, and they're going to affect your image the exact same. Um, they're just separated for easiness sake, so you can dodge on one layer, burn on another. Um, if you paint with white, you can see you're dodging. If you paint with black, you can see you're burning and making things darker. Once again, it doesn't matter if you're doing that on the dodge layer or the burn layer. They're the exact same. It's just easier to keep them separate. Um, so in this case, I don't want to dodge or make anything brighter. I actually am going to create two burn layers. So I'm just going to rename that so it's a little bit more clear. And then I really want to use this to bring our models forward, uh, differentiate them a little bit more from this kind of hazy, washed out background. So I'm just going to burn in the foreground there, really bring that grass forward and out of that background. And then the other thing, if I'm jumping back to my directional light, our light is really coming from up here, kind of flaring into our lens and falling off as it goes to the right. So I'm going to burn in just a little bit more on the right side as well. So our second burn layer I'm just going to use to accentuate our model a little bit more. So I'm going to drop my opacity down on my brush to about 30%, and I'm going to paint it with black again to burn. And if we just think of our light again coming from left to right, it's going to create a little bit of a shadow where her hair would be blocking that light, where her nose might be blocking a little bit of that light. Just a little bit here. And same thing here, just going to add a little bit more structure to her face, a little bit more interest, darken up these shadows where they are. So as you can see, our burning, just adding a little bit more interest and attention to her face, and then also really bringing our models forward and out of that kind of washed out, flary background. Next step, I want to continue to really add definition and attention to our models here and bring them forward. So I'm going to go back to the develop set. I'm going to go to finishing touches and use sharpen details. And at first you'll see it doesn't do anything because it gives us a blank mask to start with. Um, and as I paint with white, it's actually going to bring out the effect in the areas that I'm painting. So wherever I want to sharpen details, I'm just going to paint with white. And you can see it's sharpening right up there. And I really only want to do it on our models, faces. I'm not too worried about the hands or bringing attention anywhere else. And you can see that that's just bringing out a little bit more detail. Exactly what we want. We want our eye to go right to our models here. I'm going to add a quick hue and saturation adjustment layer. So once again in the adjustment layers, hue saturation, 
And I'm just going to add a quick 10 points of saturation just to liven it up a little bit before I keep going. And you can do this next step with another hue saturation layer. I'm actually going to jump back up to the portrait set. And you've got boost color with a brush that's going to work just like our sharpened details was. Wherever you brush, it's going to boost that color, give it more saturation. I'm going to actually demo boost color with selection since it works a little bit differently. So I'm going to click on that. And I really want to bring out the blue in the scarf since it's the only sort of different pop of color. You know, we've got reds, yellows, greens, but this is our main only blue area. And that's really going to help draw our attention into the center of the image and to our models. So it comes up with this menu. You start with a blank mask here. You click initially and you can see it to start to change. You hold down shift and you'll see your cursor change to have a plus sign. And you're just going to be adding to the areas where you want this effect to take place. So I'm going to hold down shift and keep adding into all these light areas of blue, darker areas of blue, and you can see it start to change over here on our mask. You can use the fuzziness and range to adjust whether you're more generous with your color, less generous with your color. Either way, in this case, it's picking up some of the blue in her jacket, so I'm going to have to brush that out anyways. So I'm going to start with that, hit OK. And I'm going to use backslash again as soon as this finishes so I can see my mask and see what I'm working with. So you can see it missed a little bit of color here in the scarf and it's also accentuating the color down here in the jacket in the dog's eye and nose where we really don't want it. So I'm just going to use black on the mask layer again to remove that effect so that it's not affecting anything other than our scarf. I'm going to switch to white so that I'm adding to that adding to that effect and bringing it into the scarf in all the areas and it's not missing any areas. So there we go. I'm going to hit backslash again, go back to our main view. So as you can see, it's not having a great effect right off the bat. Um, this action starts out with an opacity of 50% on that layer. So I'm just going to bring that opacity up to 100 just to give it a little bit more punch, a little bit more pop. So the last action I'm going to run is also in the portrait set. It's warm it up. I'm going to click that. It's just going to add it and really accentuate that warm golden hour feel as the sun is setting. It starts out a little bit heavy to me, in my opinion, so I'm going to drop that down to about 50%. And then once again, I'm not a huge fan of how it's adding too much yellow red to our model, so I'm just going to mask that out a little bit on those shadowy areas where if our light's coming from behind, it's wrapping around and affecting the edges of our models, but not so much in the shadowy areas. All right, so there's our edit. I'm going to throw all those actions we just ran, or all the layers, into a group real quick so we can turn it off and on. And I think we achieved the look we were going for. Um, it started out kind of cold and dull. You can see the end product has a lot more color in it. Your eye goes right to our models. We've created kind of this sunset golden hour effect, really brought out the greens and our foliage and grass around our models really livened up the image and brought some interest to it. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and have fun editing.